This is supposed to be a member run union and it is now being run for the benefit of the staff. Now to add insult to injury, the staff that re that received an additional executive staff million dollars uh, also enjoys over double our pension benefit, which means their pension cap is 210,000. They can retire at age 55 with 70% of their last five uh, consecutive best years of employment. That means us as SAG members who gave them this plan, um, we can retire at 55 with 70% of our cumulative earnings. We don't have the benefit of taking any of our five best years. So if you were a serious regular on 1985 to 90 and your average was 300,000 a year, if you had the pension, if you had the staff's benefit, um, you could retire with 70% of the cap 210, which means you'd get about $150,000 a year. Instead, the max you can get is only 67,500 a year. So if you're Tom Cruise and you've made hundreds of millions of dollars, you can only make at age 55, 67,500 per year, as opposed to a staff member who made 100,000 his last five years uh, in a row, his pension would be 70,000 more than Tom Cruise. So I, I find this you know, disingenuous and, and any SAG member, actor, stunt performer that has qualified for a pension should receive the same pension and health terms and conditions as that of, uh, of our staff. And I've, I've been informed that the current leadership uh, unite for strength. I'm informed that they're in support uh, of the staff making this because they said that's the only way to get such brilliant talent talent to work for us. And I say the economic figures don't support that. The economic figures support that our staff has spent us into oblivion, have, has not been accountable, uh, has lied to us pre-merger, lied to us about after his uh, books because they were virtually bankrupt and lied to us and said that the, the, there was no FBI investigation on the pension plan. Because who would have voted up a merger if we were told that there was an FBI investigation going on in our pension plan for millions of dollars and then after was virtually bankrupt and had 11,000 members on their books that didn't exist? I wouldn't, that's like buying a stock and going, hey, buy this stock, but we're not gonna disclose to you that the insiders already sold 80% and they, they lost all their mining permits and they won't be able to be in operation for the next, uh, for, you know, for six more months. That is called inducement. People have to be honest. If you want to merge or present a, a, a financial case or, or, or even a contract case to anyone, you have to be honest on both sides. This is what you're getting into. Here's the financial outlook for this company. Here's the report. Here's the, the, the audit. And here's the audit for the other side. And I'd like to throw it up to the membership for their decision. Because it's not fair that you don't disclose things. I think every one of us would be appalled if he went to buy a house and the, the realtor sold it to you, but they didn't tell you that the foundation was broken and you bought it and you had to spend hundreds of thousands to clean up your foundation. So, you know, that's basically um, what's uh, currently going on. And, and what I've done to protect you along with Miss Riker and Cupid Hayes and several other uh, uh, wonderful members that have been educated is we continue to file uh, ethical complaints to the Department of Labor and the Department of Justice to protect all members' pension and health, because the only reason to be in a union is to get better wages and working conditions and to have a viable pension and health plan. 